So now in this final video on the Protus lecture, we're going to be covering uh, the final supergroup actually. And this final supergroup, as we saw previously, is called Unicanta. Now, we actually have, I think, one, two, maybe three lectures devoted to the entire study of the Unicanta supergroup of eukaryotes. But what I just want to mention for right now as an introduction to Unicanta is the following. Unicanta involve uh, organisms that range from plants, to animals, and even some protists. And because there are some protists in Unicanta, we have to cover just a little bit of it in this lecture. Again, look at figure 28.8. This is a great figure to constantly refer to every time we mention an organism, a class, a group, a clade, whatever it may be, to really ground your knowledge on, figure 28.2. So now, what do we need to know about Unicanta in terms of our protist study? The following two types of Unicanta are important to us when we're studying protists. The first one is the amoeba zoans. Amoeba zoans. These are slime molds. Now, this has the name slime molds, common name. Most people refer to them as slime mold. But remember, slime molds, just because it's mold, a lot of people associate this with fungi. These are not fungi. We're going to get to fungi in the next lecture, but these are not fungi. Not fungi. If they're not fungi, then what are they? They're actually going to be classified mostly, for the most part at least, as, par as parasitic protists. Um, a good subclass of the amoebazoans are the entame entamoebas. Entamoebas. Okay? Entamoebas. What are these? These are mostly free-living organisms. So they're mostly free-living. They can do their own stuff for the most part. But there's a, a type of entamoeba, ent entamoeba, mostly free-living. Let me finish writing this. Organisms, um, there's a type that are parasitic. Some are parasitic. And the one to remember, again, an example, we have to remember these examples, um, is the following. The example for the parasitic is the um, histolytica. Make sure I spell this right. Histo, L Y T T I C A. Histolytica. This is found in the human intestine. So there was another one found in the human intestine, Giridia intestinalis. Be able to differentiate between the two. Be able to say that one of them is a Unicanta and the other one is the other type of you know protist group that it's within. So this is found within the human intestine. This actually causes amoebic dysentery. So that's a very, very uh, critical uh, and very, very bad digestive problem uh, that results in a lot of problems for anybody who's infected by this parasite. So amoebic dys dysentery, um, and that's a good medical clinical significance for us uh, for this entamoebas, which are part of the amoebasomans, which are not fungi. They are slime molds, um, mostly protists in their structure. Last one in the unicons. Last thing to remember about this lecture is the following: the opisthocons. These are animals, fungi, and some protists. So I'm going to write this down: animals, fungi, some protists. So of course we have to cover it because we're talking about protists in this lecture. So they do not include plants. Opisthocons do not include plants. Where are plants usually found? Plants are usually found from the Archiplasta chain, that monophyletic group of Archiplasta. Um, some plants are found in Unicanta, as we'll see when we talk about uh, plant diversity. So what are the opisthocons? What do we need to know? Um, one of them that you need to know is the nuclearids. Nuclear, double I, it's a weird spelling here. Nuclearids, these are more closely related to fungi than to other protists. More closely related to fungi, and that's something we'll talk about when we talk about fungi evolution in the next lecture, than other protists. So nuclearids, though they're protists, they are more closely related to fungi than protists themselves. So it's again, protists are very weird. They are full of these uh, different types of organisms, different uh, diversities, and all of these things uh, have their uh, critical, critical diversity components like the nuclearids. Um, this component would be the fact that they're more closely related to something that's not them than to what is them. Um, and that's pretty interesting in terms of their evolutionary history. 
Uh, another one to remember uh, that we uh, absolutely need to make sure we are clear on are the coanoflagellates. This is one you're going to see a lot, especially in my flowcharts coming up. Um, if you think these flowcharts are full of animals and di diversity, wait till we start going over the unicons. Uh, coanoflagellates are very interesting because these are also uh, prehist very, very old protists um, that are more closely related to you and I, to animals. It's the first time we actually mention animals, to animals than other protists. So these opisthocons are essentially the largest exceptions in the world um, than other protists. They're cl more closely related to you and I than they are to, let's say, a dinoflagellate. And that's pretty interesting in terms of our own evolutionary history. This is a very critical organism in the eventual development of animals. And finally, in figure 28.2, as I mentioned before, if you look at the opisthocons, you can see that they, of course, are a polytomic group. They have polytomy, and that is not good. It's difficult, and this is exemplified simply uh, as a manifestation of the flux that eukaryotic evolution gives us. The opisthocons are an exact reason for that. You have something so weird, like a protist, that's more closely related to a fungi than it is to other protists. You have a protist that's more closely related to animals than it is to other protists. Thus, you have polytomy. That's a very um, interesting exception to the rule the pistacons are. So, we have amoeba zones, we have pistacons, we have unicons. Now, that's it for protists. Uh, word of advice. Lots of information. I absolutely understand that because there's lots of information. There's a lot of memorization in this lecture. And that is difficult for a lot of students. But in order for me to at least hopefully motivate you to memorize these things, to understand, more importantly, these protists, I want to leave you with a quote to the guy who, from the guy who actually discovered protists uh, back in the you know, late 1800s, wherever it may be, hundreds of years ago. This guy, Dutch guy, his name was Von Leeuwenhoek, and he said the following, and I think it's a great quote to summarize all of this great amount of information that we covered today and a great quote to really put into perspective. He said the following, he said, no more pleasant sight has met my eye than this, referring to protus, of so many thousands of living creatures in one small drop of water. He would put a small drop of water, look at it through a microscope, and see thousands of living things. You and I can do this right now. Go to any lake, any ocean, any water body, put a water on a microscope slide, look at it, you'll see so many protists. That's why we study them. That's why we cover them. Hopefully you can, of course, appreciate their diverse nature. Um, yes, I know tons of memorization seems irrelevant to you right now, but at least understand that they are diverse, they are powerful, they are all over, and they are an important thing to understand when studying any type of biological organization and classification.